Welcome to my presentation titled, How the Stages of Grief are Reflected in the St. John Passion on the evening of Bach's birthday. I'm delighted to share my reflections with you. At the end, there will be some time for discussion and comments. For now, please keep your microphones muted. I'll be sharing computer sound and scores with you during the music playback. Bach's supremely dramatic and controversial St. John Passion inspires strong emotions in its listeners. Everything from the overall structure of the piece to its theology has spurred debate and analysis. A fascinating aspect of the work is the arrangement of the solo arias. Unlike his approach in the Matthew Passion, Bach groups arias together in tight scenes that slow down the pace of the narrative and focus the emotional response to significant events. The most important of these aria groupings occurs near the end of the story, at the moment of Jesus' death. Bach marks this event with three magnificent arias. Es ist vollbracht, mein teuer Heiland, and zerfließe mein Herze, which is preceded by the arioso, mein Herz. These four movements halt the story from the moment of Christ's last words until he is taken down from the cross. A full 20 minutes of music occupies this interval. Unlike in the Matthew Passion, where a chorale, a congregational moment of reflection, marks the moment of Christ's death, here the individual contemporary faithful Christian is given space to respond with passionate feeling to the ultimate act of Jesus' life. Each aria focuses on a different aspect of the moment. The alto aria, Es ist vollbracht, meditates on the final utterance of Jesus. The bass aria with chorale, Mein teuer Heiland, ponders the meaning of Christ's bowed head. And the tenor arioso and the soprano aria, Zerfließe mein Herze, reacting to the world's physical upheaval in the wake of Jesus' passing, take in the full reality of shock and grief represented by the death of the deity himself. Tonight, we will delve into this portion of the St. John Passion and walk with Bach through the experience of death and grieving. We will discover moments of denial and dissociation, flashes of bitterness and anger, prostrating grief, and glimpses of comforting hope and acceptance. Taken together, no other passage in music excavates the heart's pilgrimage through this most human of experiences, the facing of mortality, as minutely as this. Before we begin, I have a disclaimer. The following presentation is an experiential journey through this portion of the Passion. It reflects my reactions to the music and the emotions that it evokes in me. I do not imply that Bach envisioned these images, but rather I believe that great art transcends its origin and its time and can speak to us of experiences and events that its creator might never have imagined. Bach seeking to penetrate the inmost soul, created music that speaks poignantly to the human condition, and therefore it continues to reach into our lives, even if our beliefs and desires diverge from those of his intended listeners. We'll be listening to excerpts from Emmanuel Music's 2001 recording of the St. John Passion, the 1725 version, conducted by Craig Smith. The soloists in order of appearance are Frank Kelly Evangelist and Mark McSweeney Jesus, Pamela Delal Alto with Laura Jeppesen Viola da Gamba, Paul Guthrie Bass with Beth Pearson Cello, William Height Tenor, and Kendrick Holton Soprano with Julia Skolnick Flute and Peggy Pearson English Horn. 
Since our final musical excerpt is not part of the 1725 version recorded by Emanuel Music, we'll also hear a performance by the Netherlands Bach Society, Jos van Veldhoven conductor. We'll start with the recitative preceding the first aria. The evangelist, singing the literal words of the gospel in Martin Luther's translation, narrates the final moments of Jesus's life. He bestows his mother Mary into a disciple's care. He is given gall to drink and he utters, it is finished.
The sound of the viola da gamba is utterly desolate and uncanny, resembling no other instrument in the orchestra heard to this point. The outline of Jesus' final statement is repeated over and over like a ringing in the ears. Time seems to have slowed almost to a stop exacerbated by the silences and the bareness of the sonic texture. We are sitting by the deathbed of someone suffering a long illness. The tedious, agonizing watch, the empathy with pain and discomfort, the odd sense of relief mingled with emptiness when the moment of life passing is finally realized. It is finished. Comfort for the cessation of suffering, release from the suspense of waiting, but still loss that is too raw, too new to be processed. The aria goes on to muse upon the long night of sorrow, ticking off its final hours. That long note in the voice, how it hangs there, grinding against the harmony, stuck in motionlessness. Then the slow climb up the scale, as if with a heavy burden, which is finally released on the descent. Then silence. And a wild outburst. All is activity, flash, and energy. Der Held aus Jude siegt mit Macht. The champion from Judah conquers with strength. Bach speaks of triumph in the midst of tragedy. But emotionally, this passage feels unstable, almost like hysterical, inappropriate laughter welling up from the unprocessed agony and grief. In fact, it crashes into a cliff of silence, out of which the singer once again repeats the mournful truth. It is over. His life is over and almost subconsciously once more at the very end of the aria but a moment has passed in the gospel narrative
ingenuous, tender joy. What is this doing here? The exact moment of death is transformed into a guessing game, as if by a child. You nodded. What do you mean? The very sweetness of the melody, filled with gentle, optimistic leaps of sixths and sevenths, is intensified by the contrast of solo cello with solo viola da gamba, where the gamba sounded wasted, unearthly. The cello is filled with robust vigor and health. The singer begins a series of questions, full of personal hope. Am I now free from death? Am I destined for heaven? Is the world saved? It's as if the moment of death was too immediate to engage with or even accept. There's more than a whiff of denial in the sunniness of this music. But Bach adds another crucial layer to the material. While the singer and the cello engage in their intertwining dialogue, the choral ensemble sings a slow chorale in a low register. The speed and range of this choral interpolation makes it resonate subliminally. The sweetness of the major key and the lyrical melody of the chorale also speak strongly of comfort while the text sings of eternal life. The warmth of this aria moves us forward from the nihilism of the previous music. By allowing the heart to feel again, it opens a pathway for the full depths of sorrow to flood the soul at last. I apologize for that. I meant to stop that just to make a small comment on this little interlude. Suddenly, the outside world intrudes. A storm, an earthquake. Literally and figuratively, the earth responds to the upheaval of the natural order. A voice, perhaps the narrator's own, breaks in. How can I weigh my own grief against the power of nature? The sudden injustice of this loss, the sheer waste of life, prompts a flash of anger.
At last the floodgates open and the tears pour forth. Once the weeping begins, it is unstoppable. This aria is a true threnody, an outpouring of grief and loss. The vocal line literally sobs and wails with mourning, building in energy as it goes like a crying jag. The sobbing only lets up when the text Dem Höchsten zu Ehren, to honor the highest, appears. Then the voice suddenly sustains a radiant, calm note over the instruments, like a ritual uplifting of an icon. What was once a private inner experience is now proclaimed to all. But the very word tot, dead, once uttered, cannot be overcome. The shocking word is repeated, choked on, wailed out over and over again. The predicted return of the opening music is subverted, rejected. Instead, the singer continues to pound out the raw phrase, Dein Jesus ist tot. The full magnitude of loss is now the only reality. The sobbing resumes and lurches to a close. Bach's manipulation of time during this passage is masterful. During this 20 minute arc of music, he portrays the grieving process that might unfold over hours, days, or weeks. Yet in the narrative, the events described are nearly simultaneous. From here, the passion narrative winds quickly to its conclusion, the burial of Jesus' body. We hear a beautiful chorus laying him to rest, root vol. This movement is the structural and effective equivalent to the final chorus in the St. Matthew Passion. However, Bach reserves one last invention in the St. John for his final statement on grief. Instead of leaving us on Good Friday at Jesus' tomb, Bach adds one final chorale.
magnificent humanity of the composer is most vividly on display in this chorale. Dazed with our grief at the burial of Jesus, we find ourselves musing on our own death. The chorale begins at the top of its melodic range and descends, mirroring the path of the angel coming to take up the human soul. The repeat of this music dwells in the dark of the tomb. The sleeping body waits in the earth. In the second part, the immediacy of the vision overtakes us and we live it in real time, the ultimate dawn of the last day breaking. Truly the joy, ecstasy, and love that flood into our hearts with this music is the peace and acceptance we have been hungering for. Bach ends the St. John Passion looking beyond grief and sorrow with a radical statement of the final meaning, consolation and unity with God. <laughs> 